Hi, everyone. So my name is Michael Johnson. I will be the, your instructor for this course. I can be reached by email at michael.johnson24 at mohawkcollege.ca. So we'll go through some stuff to start. So I'm an Ontario certified teacher with a background in economics and business. Email me at michael.johnson24 at mohawkcollege.ca for any questions. And I want to go through a few more things here. So the best way to find work, this is the best way to find work. So in Google, the best thing to do is to type in recruiter, for example, industry you work in, for example, type in recruiter project manage, product manager in Google search, then check each website in the search and email your resume to the emails on each website. This is the best way to find a job because the recruiter will receive your email, your resume directly. So I recommend, yeah, search recruiter. For example, you go to Google here, type in, let's say, recruiter statistics, because that would be relevant to this course. So instead, let's do recruiter research jobs, let's say, recruiter research jobs. And then you can go down the list, Venus Consultancy here. You want to use that email extractor that I uh, that I downloaded. So type an email extractor. Add to Chrome, add extension. And here you want to pin that. So that's pin now. So make sure you do that. And then also if you go here, there's no emails here. So go to contact us. And then there's one email here. So you'd want to send your resume to info at Venus Hiring here. That would be a good place to send it. I'll post this into the uh, announcements here. So recruiter, research, jobs, and Google search. You put that in here. And then go here, Jubal CA here. You go to this website and then there's seven emails that pop up. So you wanna send your resume to all those emails in that list there. And then you just go down, go down, check each page here, find research recruiter jobs in Ontario, email your resume to talent experience global team at grp.pearson.com. So just keep going down the list and just emailing your resume. So emailing your resume, to people, emailing your resume is the key to success. Always email your resume. That is the best way to get a job. So I wanted to uh, provide you with that information. And then here, the final mid slash midterm exam and test policies. The final exam is open book, which means you can use your notes and canvas information. Attendance will be taken, bring your student identification. Arrive on time, late arrivals will not be allowed to enter the room. When your exam is complete, you're required to leave the room. There is zero tolerance for any student who fails to comply with the following. No food or drinks, no earpods, headphones, smartwatches, or cell phones. Leave personal devices muted and in your bag. All bags and backpacks must be left at the end of the front of the classroom. No chat GPT, no generative AI, no Discord, no WhatsApp, and no communication over digital channels. No talking with fellow students. Please bring your own device, computer, or tablet to complete this exam. Failure to follow these instructions will result in a mark of zero, and you will be asked to leave the room. So I want to go through all of that there for you. And then also there is there are service listings here. So the you can go to the service listings to get more information about um, services provided by the um, by the school. Yeah, and then also there's information about counseling services on the service listings. So make sure to check that out if, if you need uh, counseling through the school. Okay, so. These are some instructions on how to download Lockdown Browser. So make sure you download this as soon as you possibly can here. 
So if you can download Lockdown Browser, follow these instructions, download it, that would be great. So make sure, just follow this instruction list there. And um, so the, let's go back to modules here. So for the research project, this is the end of course project. So the city of Hamilton wishes to increase the retention of international students in the city of Hamilton after they graduate. The city has hired you and your colleagues to conduct research to determine what percentage of international students intend to remain in Hamilton after graduation, why those who will remain in, like in Hamilton, why those who intend to leave are leaving, what Hamilton can do to increase the percentage of those who stay. So you have to collect data from at least 30 IBMs, so GBM slash inter international undergraduate students, or at least 30 students from each segment if you're going to compare two or more segments of the population, e.g. males and females. Do at least two of the following statistical analysis for each of the non-demographic questions in your survey. Differences between population segments. Compare the results of for two or more segments in your sample. Correlation slash association. Is there a correlation or association between two variables? Population mean or proportion. Test the research hypothesis regarding the population mean or proportion for two segments in your sample. Here are some examples. What is the level of program idea appeal amongst IBM students? Are there differences between the results obtained in two different samples, e.g. by gender or by age group? Is there an association between the level of program idea appeal and type of student's academic background, e.g. business versus non-business? Research project of instructions, this team project up to five students per team. The final research report should be written as a technical report, 15 pages according to the structure presented in chapter 15 in the textbook. It should include the following top components, title page, executive summary, table of contents, background, business problem statement, research problem, research objectives, secondary research, literature review with APA references, methodology, research design, sampling design, data collection methods, data analysis methods, limitations, findings, conclusions, rep recommendations, appendices, complex tables, statistical tests, supporting documents, forms of questionnaires, and other evidence, bibliography, references, Data must be collected using an online surveying tool such as SurveyMonkey. Other data collection methods may be used in addition to an online tool. Marking scheme as follows. So research project evaluation scheme, the team's mark is determined by the executive summary, which is five marks, background, 20 marks, business problem statement, five, research problem, five, research objectives, five, secondary research, including APA references, five, methodology, 20 marks, re research design, four, sampling design, four, data collection methods, four, data analysis methods, four, limitations, four, findings per question, including references to dependencies, 50 marks, data description, 20, data display, 20, data analysis using hypothesis testing, such association testing results, 10, conclusions and recommendations, five marks, bibliography with APA references, five marks, appendices, 35 marks, questionnaire, 25, Hypothesis testing, such association testing chart, 10, spelling grammar, 10 marks. So that's the research project. And if you can follow this checklist, it's up to, make sure to follow this checklist. It's up to five students per team. You wanna make sure you have all of these, um, these headings here for the project. So have everything in these headings here and then have all these project components and then have all these findings here. So make sure to follow the checklist um, so yeah, make sure to follow the checklist and that's, that's very important to being successful. So make sure to, uh, follow the checklist for the, uh, assignment. So course outline, this is the general, this is the general one. It doesn't go through the specifics. So I'll get to the next one here. So the, so there are some survey results from the last class here that I posted that you can use to do your report. Also, we did a focus group in the last section that I taught that shows a lot of the recommendations and how to keep people in Hamilton. You can use this for your report. Also, um, course marks by assessment, the Final exam is 25%, midterm is 25%, quizzes are 30%, and final report is 20%. So. And then the learning plan here. The learning plan, I recommend reading through the learning plan. 
My email is michael.johnson24 at mohawkcollege.ca. You owe me for any questions you have. And uh, the it's uh, bring your own device policy here. So make sure that you bring your own device. And this is the, the, the textbook that you could buy. So that's that's textbook, and then you can you can register for it through there. The this is week by week. So this week we're going to go through outcomes we expect of the research, translate management decision problems slash objectives, e.g. sales, profit, diversification, market share, etc. into research problems slash objectives. So uh, then it'll go week by week, and make sure to follow that. We're going to follow schedule week by week. And our lesson be based on all these uh, all these components week by week, and then let's go back to here. So, the if we go back here, the so there's textbook details, hard copy textbook details, ebook, uh, and yeah, so textbook stuff is all located here. How to buy the hard copy textbook? How to buy the ebook? Here it is. Yeah, so the ebook here, that's also located. Yeah, so you can buy or rent the ebook version. And then here's some resources you can use for when you're doing your research report. We'll go through this in class a lot on how to uh, use these in a research report. And then these are some, these are some things that we will go through that are useful on on learning statistic foundation. So I recommend watching those videos here and that'll help you with some of the stuff that we'll talk about. So we'll go through all this in class though. Then, so let's get to week one here. So week one, we're gonna, so I recommend you to read the IBM such GBM program manual. Uh, chapters one, two, and three you should focus on. Do practice quizzes on the Student Companion website. Take chapters two and three quiz in my Canvas. Research ethics tutorial and upload your certificate of completion. So for chapter one PowerPoint here. So we're going to do this here. It's going to be the role of marketing research and management decision making. Learning objectives chapter one, the role of marketing research and management decision making. Describe the marketing concept and marketing mix. Understand the marketing environment within which Managers must make decisions, define marketing research, understand the importance of marketing research in shaping marketing decisions, learn when marketing research should and should not be conducted, the nature of marketing. Marketing is the process of planning and executing the conception, pricing, promotion, and distribution of ideas, goods, and services to create exchanges that satisfy individual and organizational objectives. The nature of marketing. Marketing concept, a business philosophy based on consumer, goal, and system orientation. Why should marketing research be conducted? Understand customers' needs and wants. Identify target market and create matching brand identity and marketing mix. Understand changes in the external environment and identify opportunities and threats. Marketing research defines the planning, collection, analysis of data relevant to marketing decision-making and the communication of the results of this analysis to management. The importance of marketing research. Roles in marketing research are descriptive, gathering, presenting statements of fact, industry sales trends, diagnostic explanation of data or actions, impact on sales due to package design change, predictive specification of how to use descriptive and diagnostic research to predict the results of planned marketing decision. The importance of marketing research. The drive for quality and customer satisfaction. Return on quality as quality delivers desired by target market and positively impacts profit. Continual improvement for customers meet changing customer needs. Customer satisfaction will increase as customer needs are met. The importance of marketing research, customer retention, develop customer relationships, increase loyalty, retain customers, the ever-changing marketplace, understand how customers change and opportunities and threats, be proactive rather than reactive. Marketing strategy, develop a long-run marketing strategy for the company. Types of research studies applied solves a specific problem, better understanding the marketplace, describes why a strategy or tactic failed, reduces uncertainty in management decision-making, basic explains frontiers of knowledge rather than solving a specific problem, validate a theory, learn about a concept, universities, grant recipients, et cetera, conduct basic research. Applied research studies, pro programmatic, 
develop marketing options through segmentation, opportunity analyses, or consumer attitudes and predict usage studies, selective test decision alternatives, evaluative assess program performance. Decision to conduct research, consider conducting marketing research when resources are lacking. Research results would not be useful long-term. The opportunity has passed. A decision has already been made. Managers cannot agree on what they need to know. Decision-making data already, already exists. The research costs outweigh the benefits. So the decision to conduct research, deciding whether to conduct marketing research. So small profit margin, small market size, the costs are likely to be greater than benefits, e.g. eyeglass replacement, screw, tire valve extension, don't conduct marketing research for small market size and small profit margin. Large profit margin, small market size, the benefits are possibly greater than costs, e.g. ultra expensive Lamborghini type sportswear, larger specialized industrial equipment like computer aided metal stamping machines, perhaps conducting marketing research, learn all you can from existing information prior to making the decision to conduct research, large market size, small profit margin, the benefits are likely to be greater than the cost, e.g. Stouffer's frozen entrees, crest teeth widener strips, perhaps conduct marketing research, learn all you can from existing information prior to making the decision to conduct research. Large market size, large profit margin. The benefits are most likely to be greater than cost, e.g. medical equipment like CAT scanners, Shiba's high definition television, conduct marketing research. So yeah, we got through that here. And the next thing here we will cover is we will do chapter two here. So chapter two, problem definition, exploratory research and the research process. So learning objectives, chapter two, problem definition, exploratory research and research process, understand the problem definition process, describe the steps involved in the marketing research, research process, understand the components of the research requests, describe the three basic research methods, learn how the marketing research process is initiated. So the problem definition process starts with what is a problem or opportunity, recognize the problem or opportunity, any suspect motives, find out why the information is sought, complete situational analysis, understand the decision-making environment, find the root of the problem, use the symptoms to help clarify the problem. Management support is key. Translate management problem to marketing research problem. Have you researched other research? Define, determine whether the information already exists. Are the objectives doable slash realistic? Determine whether the question can be answered. Ensure information needs are clearly stated. State the research objective. Recognize the problem or opportunity. This is the first step. Need to be anticipated, such be responsive to change in the external environment. Marketing research can define problems and opportunities. Why is information needed? Important to understand this. So time, such money is not wasted or incorrect research were completed. What will the information be used for? What is information most important? Decision-making environment, situation analysis, exploratory research, pilot studies, experience surveys analysis, secondary data analysis, case analysis, focus groups, and internets. So use symptoms to clarify problem. What are the symptoms of the problem? What is the deeper problem? Iceberg principle. From management to research problem, management decision problem, action oriented broader. Marketing research problem. What information is needed to solve the management problem? Marketing research objective goal statement. Does the information exist? Dig through company information to find out. If it exists, time and money are saved. Avoid the nice no syndrome. Research must be actionable. Can the question be answered? Yes, if the type of information that exists or can be obtained. If you are looking for something quite new, it's risky. State the research objectives, stated in terms of precise information needed to address the problem or opportunity. Must be well formulated as they are the project's roadmap. Must be specific, unambiguous, and approved by the manager. Not a task list, but what the study will achieve. The marketing research process, one, identification of the problem and statement of the research objectives, two, creation of research design, three, choice and method of research, Four, selection of the sampling procedure. Five, collection of the data. Six, analysis of the data. Seven, writing and presentation of the report. Eight, follow-up. Creating the research design. Research design, the plan to be followed to answer all the marketing research objectives. 
descriptive studies answer who, what, where, when, and how, helps define and understand relationships between variables and the problem, to gain better understanding of the market, determine trends, brand loyalty, customer profiles, creating the research design, causal research, confirms series, identifies cause and effect, shows clear relationship between independent and dependent variables, creating the research design dependent variable, concept expected to be explained or influenced by the independent variable, change the dependent variable occurs by manipulating the independent variables, independent variable, concept over which the researcher has control and which is hypothesized to cause or influence dependent variable, concomitant variation, temporal sequence, spurious association are things that pop up. So sometimes it may seem like the independent variable and dependent variable are related, but it turns out that it's just a, it's just a coincidence and that does happen. So choosing the right research method, survey research, interviewer interacts with respondents, obtain facts, opinions, and attitudes, observation research, descriptive research that monitors respondents' actions, experiments, measures causality, in which the researcher changes one or more variables and observes the effect of the changes on another variable. Selecting a sampling procedure, probability sampling, sample a subset of the population, assumed to be representative cross-section, Every segment in the population has a known chance of being selected. Non-probability sampling is a subset of the population. Chances of selection for the various elements in the population are unknown, usually based on convenience. So complete the process, collect the data, analyze the data, write and present a report, follow up with the client. Managing the research process, the research request describes potential research projects, includes benefits and estimated costs, request proposal, soliciting suppliers to submit formal proposal, Company provides why study is needed, research objectives, methodology, and time frame. Suppliers provide costs, their experience, and references. The marketing research proposal, title page, statement of research objectives, study design, areas of questioning, data analysis, personnel involved, specifications and assumptions, services, cost, timing. So what do clients want? Clients want a marketing research supplier who, one, maintains client confidentiality, is honest, is punctual, is flexible, flexible, delivers against project specifications, provides high quality output, is responsive to the client's needs, has high quality control standards, is customer oriented in client interactions, keeps the client informed through the, throughout the project. Will the research be used? Determines, term, determinants of whether research is used or not. Researcher communicates effectively. Quality data is generated. Costs are controlled. Information is delivered on time. Conforms to prior expectations. Clear presentation. Political acceptability within company. Lack of challenge status quo. So those are the things that they're looking for there. And then the next thing, we'll get through chapter three now. So chapter three will be our next focus here. So chapter three, secondary data collection and management. We're gonna understand what secondary data is as well as its advantages and disadvantages. We're gonna describe how firms create an internal database. We're gonna explain the process of data mining. We're gonna understand behavioral targeting. We're gonna describe the implications of marketing research on privacy concerns. We're gonna describe the types of information management systems. So secondary data, we're gonna research results that are already published, may be found internally within a company or externally outside the company, should seek both if possible, collect secondary data first, pull primary data, new data gathered to help solve the problem under investigation. Advantages of secondary data includes it saves time, money, and inconvenience, can help to clarify or refine the issue or problem, might provide solution to research problem, might provide primary data research alternatives, can alert the researcher to research problems, provides background information, enhancing research credibility, may provide the sample frame. So limitations of secondary data include lack of availability, not relevant and sufficient, inaccurate information, always ask yourself who collected the data, what was the original study's purpose, what was collected and how, when was it collected, and is it consistent with other data. Internal databases is a collection of related information developed from data within the organization, can be created from sales information and is used as a marketing tool. So internal databases, database marketing, marketing that relies on the creation of large computerized file of customers and potential customer profiles and purchase patterns to create a targeted marketing mix, allows for individualized direct marketing and customer relationship management. 
Internal database is a neural network, a computer program that mimics the processes of the human brain and is capable of learning from examples to find patterns in data. Data mining is the use of statistical and other advanced software to discover non-obvious patterns hidden in a database. It's used in marketing for customer acquisition, customer retention, customer abandonment, and market basket analysis. So internal databases, behavioral targeting, the use of online and offline data to understand a customer's habits, demographics, and social networks in order to increase the effectiveness of online advertising. Internal databases battle over privacy, identity theft, government actions, laws to protect personal information and privacy, payment for revealing private information. Internal databases, marketing research aggregators is a company that acquires, catalogs, reformats, segments, and resells reports already published by large and small marketing research firms. Growing area, examples are all on that research.com, profound.com, usadata.com. So information management, geographic information systems, GIS, computer-based system uses secondary or primary data to generate maps. You visually displays various types of data geographically. Decision support systems, DSS, interactive personalized information management system designed to be initiated and controlled by individual decision makers. View company information as you wish to see it. Can also ask what if questions. So we got through this here. The next thing we're gonna do is get through some other stuff here. So the so under week one, the, the under week one, there there's a research ethics tour that's due on June fifth. I want you to complete. So make sure that you up you do this course here and complete the online tutorial and upload your certificate of completion. You may want to keep a card copy for your records and add to your resume. So that might be something you want to do. And then this is a professional email checklist that I recommend going through. So yeah, so email to your Mohawk College address. Uh, subject line should be brief to the points. Greeting, say good afternoon, hello, that type of thing. So good morning, Professor Smith, or hello, Mrs. Smith. There you go. Body of the email, use proper grammar, spelling, and punctuation. And use the proper name of the course in the email. Don't use texting abbreviations in the email. And uh, and uh, yeah, make sure that you state your name. Yeah, so that's that's very important for this. Let's get back here. So there's a few things that I wanna go through, some links that I wanna share with you here. So the, here, there's some links that will be useful. So there's a, one of the organizations that I, that I had, that I worked with when I went to university was El Serpa. And they do a lot of research on economic topics. So you may want to look at the research here. So the working papers by El Serpa. So maybe so look at these and and uh just analyze them so i'll talk about there's a few like christos shiamtanis i worked under he is a great researcher i recommend reading that paper and seeing how he structures that paper with key pang and yeah so if you can go through these papers here it's it's very very effective to go through to see what the structure should be and yeah, there's a lot of great researchers here that would help you with how to structure it well. So that's a good place to, to look at. And then good examples of surveys. There's a lot of different surveys that are very well done. So um, the customer satisfaction score, this is an effective survey. It's with smiley faces and like uh, frowns and angry faces. It really shows like how people feel. Customer effect score, zero to 10, so not at all likely to extremely likely. So at zero to 10 scale, that works well too. Yeah, so, and then milestone surveys, so score scale of one to 10, how will you rate your experience shopping for our products? That is very effective too. So yeah, those types of ones, multiple choice questions, rating scales, Likert scales. So like very satisfied, not somewhat satisfied, 
not other satisfied nor, nor dissatisfied, somewhat dissatisfied, very dissatisfied. That's very effective. Binary questions, yes or no. All of those are very effective. So I recommend using this website to generate your uh, surveys for, yeah, so I recommend that. Also, there's another way they can write reviews. The problem with that is you might get, you might get some very negative feedback that's not useful in a lot of cases. There might be a lot of unconstructive feedback. You want to make sure you can get very constructive feedback. So make sure that you can craft your questions so you're not getting a lot of, like, if it's just write a review, you can't filter out all that extremely unconstructive negative feedback. Some negative feedback is constructive, but there's some that is unconstructive. So yeah, um, having crafting your questions is very important. So make sure to craft it so you get accurate feedback. So you want to craft it so you get accurate feedback as much as possible. So that's that's very important. And then there's a video on research design I recommend watching right there. And then this is a, an example of a survey for the final report. This was done in the last section. So would you want to remain in Hamilton after graduation would be the first question. If yes, the first question, why do you want to remain in Hamilton? Second, if no to the first question, why do you want to leave the Hamilton? Make suggestions on how to increase the percentage of people staying in Hamilton. So th those were some questions that were crafted for the survey in the last section. So you could just use that to as inspiration for your survey. And also you want to cite with APA for this course. So APA is really key for being successful in this course. So you can use this citation generator. So you just type in like, let's say you're citing, let's say you're citing, um, for example, maybe you're citing harvard.edu. Put that in, search, cites. And you want to make sure that you're, you're citing everything using in-text citations. And uh, have you need a citation list also. So that's very important. Yeah, so here you go, complete citation. And then that will automate it and make it a lot easier for you to do citations. So I recommend doing the citations this way. And then it will provide you with uh, an in-text citation and a citation for your re reference list. So I recommend using this citation generator. It'll save you a lot of time. And then there's a peer review tutorial here. I'd recommend you watch also. So yeah, that that is week one. So I recommend going through all those resources for week one watching those videos, et cetera. And I'll go through the assignment due dates here. So I'll, I'll go to student view here. So the assignment due dates are research ethics tutorials due June 5th, survey month tutorials due June 13th, chapters one to three quizzes due June 20th, chapters four and five quiz due June 27th, chapter six and seven quiz due July 4th, midterm exam will be on July 11th, uh, chapters 8 and 9 quiz will be July 11th. Chapters 11 and 12 quiz will be July 18th. Chapters 13 quiz will be due July 25th. Chapter 20, 14 quiz will be due August 1st. Final research re project report will be due August 7th. Final exam will be due uh, will be on August 8th. And then chapter 15 quiz will be August 8th here. So due August 8th. So that's that's the course here. And just let me know if you have any questions so far about the course and I can go through them with you and uh, you just email me about any questions you have and uh, we'll go through more next week. But yeah, just email me about any questions you have about this uh, course so far and yeah, see you next week in person.